The primary function of the spacecraft we have orbiting our planet is to gather and relay information back to tracking stations on Earth. The craft may be working in conjunction with a space station or deploying satellites in the quest to further our knowledge. In the course of obtaining this knowledge, astronauts carry out many tasks. It might mean taking a spacewalk, or would you believe it, playing with toys. Each of these toys works because of important scientific and mathematical principles. Principles that are often taken for granted on the ground. Watch what happens when the suction cup releases from the astronaut's hand. You can see the spring jumper take off. Watch it again. Look how fast it travels across the spaceship. In slow motion, you can see it tumbling off the lockers. The big question with this scene is, will the frog swim as well in air as he does in water? If you watch closely, you'll see, no, he does not. The astronaut tries several ways to get the frog to swim in a straight line, but because the air is much less dense than water, the frog will just flop aimlessly around. With this toy submarine, both the propeller and the submarine turn as it floats through the air. In water, of course, only the propeller would rotate. Now, if we hold on to the propeller, the submarine turns around it. But when we let both go, it takes off. This time the astronaut has attached small pieces of paper to the propeller to make it larger. What will happen when we let this go? You can see it really takes off. Now a pen is taped to the end of the propeller to see if that would change the way the submarine moved. As you can see, it is now far less directional in its movement and much harder to keep under control. This fish can swim really well in water, but here in space, he's really struggling and not getting anywhere. However, one thing that will help the fish swim better in air is increasing the size of the fin. It also appears that releasing the fish very gently has an impact on which direction the fish will swim. We finally got it right, and the fish is swimming forward. If we release a flapping bird into microgravity, you can see it just flies around in circles and doesn't seem to have any direction of travel. Look at it again in slow motion. It just goes around, not in a straight line as it does in Earth's gravity. It looks as if it's rotating around the wings. Now if we get it to soar without the wings flapping, it soars across the deck. This is a great way of showing how birds need gravity to fly.